Pepun and Pat, oh Pepun and Pat, we thank you, oh God of Pepun and Pat, we thank you, oh God of Pepun and Pat, Pepun and Pat, Pepun and Pepun and Pat. Oh, we thank you, oh God of heaven. We thank you, oh God of heaven. Heaven and heart, heaven and heart, heaven and heart, heaven and heart. We thank you, oh God of heaven. We thank you, oh God of heaven. Heaven and heart, heaven and heart, heaven and heart, oh heaven and heart. We praise you, oh God of heaven. We praise you, oh God of heaven and heart. Heaven and heart, heaven and heart. Heaven and heart, oh heaven and heart. We love you, oh God of heaven and heart. We love you, oh God of heaven and heart. Heaven and heart, heaven and heart, we praise you, oh God of heaven and heart, we praise you, oh God of heaven and heart, heaven and heart, heaven and heart. Heaven and heart, oh heaven and heart, we love you, oh God of heaven and heart. We love you, oh God of heaven and heart. Heaven and heart, heaven and heart. Heaven and heart, oh heaven and heart. We thank you, oh God of heaven. We thank you, oh God of heaven and heart. Heaven and heart, heaven and heart. Heaven and heart, oh heaven and heart. We praise you, oh God of heaven and heart. We praise you, oh God of heaven and heart. Heaven and heart, heaven and heart. Heaven and heart, oh heaven and heart. Jesus, mighty name. God is a God of preparation. God does not do anything without preparing for it. You cannot catch God of God. It's not possible. We want to embark on a journey of three days. You can't do that. Magadaka bose ke maye ke bosa. 
You can't embark on that journey without preparing. So our gathering tonight is to prepare us to receive the fuel for the race, for the journey of the next three days. So I welcome you all in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. I can see my daughter from Uganda. This three-day fast is not for you. You are a nursing mother. You are a nursing mother. Hallelujah. Let me see my grandson. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. That is Joseph. Amen, buddy. Yes. Hallelujah. You are not part of this fast. You are a nursing mother. You just gave birth. So just join us yes, in the prayers yes. and follow us in the spirit. We are fasting on your behalf. All yes. nursing mothers are exempted from this uh, fast. All nursing mothers. All yes. pregnant sisters, all nursing mothers. You are all exempted. Hallelujah. It is well with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Mind. Thank you, Father. Does Joseph want to preach for us? That not for me. Hallelujah. You can unmute yourself now. Hallelujah. Thank you, okay. Father. This day shall be unto us for a memorial because of the journey, the start of this journey. Today, I congratulate everyone. We just have nearly 40 45 minutes. So, we have just come for communion. We want to receive the fuel of never perish so that we can run the race of never fainting, so that we can run the race of never falling. That's what we have just come to do. So, in the next 20, 30, 40 minutes, we are done. But get ready. There is going to be divine impact, divine fueling to run and succeed in this three days race. You don't embark on chronic fasts if you don't have chronic situation. You don't embark on chronic fast just to use it to thank God. Mm -mm. You can do, you can use fruit fast for as many days as you want. But when you embark on chronic fast, there is a chronic battle to fight. There is a chronic battle to fight. Everybody has been sharing of fathomable testimony. My inbox is flooded. They have overwhelmed me. If you have not seen anyone, this three days journey shall distinguish you. You shall encounter your own unfathomable testimony in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Let's quickly open. Hallelujah. 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 I want my daughter from Germany. Hallelujah. That's a uh, Joyce. Mr. Joyce Oyaya from Germany. Unmute. Ask to unmute. Unmute. Yes. How are you, daughter of the Most High God? 
Yeah, I'm fine in the Lord. The Lord has kept me. He's protecting me. He's giving me strength every day. Amen. And he has helped me to maintain my joy despite everything. And I'm just grateful. Yeah. Don't mind me if I have not posted your testimony. The reason is no. obvious. I it's have no testimony. Daddy, Daddy, you decide everything. It's not me to you are the, you are the boss. Amen. Not only am I overwhelmed with the floodgates of testimonies. Yes. Congratulations Fantastic. on your restoration. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to open to the book of Romans. Romans. Okay. Chapter 10. Romans 10? Yes. Okay. Verses, chapter, I mean, chapter 10, verse. Yes. Romans chapter 10. Yes. You know what you are going to do for me? Anytime I yes. stop you, stop, and I will explain. So start okay. from verse 1. We are going to verse 7, but start from verse 1. Okay. I'm reading from the King James Version. Okay. Uh, the topic is Israel needs the gospel. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God. Stop for there. Christ stop there. You will continue. Just stop there. Let me quickly explain. My desire for Israel is that they may be saved. They have the zeal of religiosity. They lack the zeal of spirituality. I'm summarizing what you have read. If you are on this altar and you want to partake of this three day journey, get your dust bin. Get your garbage bin ready. Because there are so many things concerning religiosity that we drop inside that dust bin. Mm. It's time to sharpen our spirituality. The righteousness of God can never be compared with the righteousness of man. The righteousness of man is like a filthy rag. There's nobody who likes a filthy rag. Our righteousness of the flesh is filthy rag. Israel has a zeal for God. This is a message for everyone who has been so zealous. One of them came to me in my inbox several weeks ago on this order. He told me all the things he did in my life that I didn't even remember. Hallelujah. Amen. He told me how he is a man. He told me how he has been active on the altar. He said he led an intercessory group one hour before the altar starts. Some of you were the members of his intercessory group that I disbanded in 2017, we remember. He gave, he gave me a litany of the things he has done in this group. How sacrificial, how he refused to go to sleep while we are still on. And I replied him with one word. It's not me you did it for. If you have to wake up one hour before the altar begins in intercession, it is God's kingdom. You have zeal for God. Where is your spirituality? That is religiosity. God is not moved by your religiosity. You are not saved. In that day, and the Lord Jesus told us what happened. He said they would come to him and they said, in your name. And they began to, just like that brother, began to list 
all the things he did on the altar. He said it was epic. He used some terms to show how qualified, how qualitative some of the services he rendered for God, not for me. No pastor can be your rewarder. God is the only rewarder of those who serve him. The pastor may judge you right. If God judge you wrong, you are gone. Don't wait to be scored by your pastors. Wait for heaven to score you right. If heaven score you right, no pastor on the earth can score you wrong. And if all the pastors of this world gather together to score you wrong, if God scores you right, you are right forever. Don't come and tell me what you do for God. In your name, we cast that devil. Rabboni didn't deny. In your name, he began to say all the things they did in his name. By the time he finished, he said, I know thee not. I don't know you after the flesh. I don't know you after the flesh. Hallelujah. I know thee not. Ye are workers of iniquity. Ye are workers of iniquity. His friend was not saved. His friend was too religious. Till, they, till today, is Judaism they are practicing. There is no place in Judaism for Christ, the Savior. If you are not saved by the Savior, you are damned eternally. There is no place for Christ the Savior inside Judaism. If you want to be angry with me now, better be angry. But I will tell you the truth. Papa, when are we going to Israel? Talking of Vitographical Israel, I want to go on a pilgrimage. May you not die in religiosity. There is a common word of Israel. It is in heaven. No amount of pilgrimage, no number of times you go on a pilgrimage for the physical Israel and save your soul. If your name is not in the commonwealth of Israel, the book of the commonwealth of Israel in heaven, you are damned forever. So don't come to my inbox to ask me when are we planning to go to Israel. Wait, Israel. I'm a Jew in the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Israel had zeal for God. But they lack the righteousness of God. And they were damned. That shall not be your portion in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Continue from, is it verse 5? Continue now. Verse 4. Okay, continue. Yeah. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness, which is of the law. The man who does those things shall live by them. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your Don't heart. Don't go there yet. Wait. There are two righteousness now. Listen to this truth. From the mouth of Apostle Paul. There is the righteousness of the law. There is the righteousness of the spirit. There is the righteousness of letters. The things of the spirit, let me quickly explain that to you, is not caught in the physical. 
you will never see the score sheets of the things of the spirit because they are invisible and invisible. You will never see the score sheets to know the marks. The things of the spirit are of the spirit. The things of the flesh are of the flesh. What Apostle Paul is explaining from that verse 5 and 6, the righteousness of faith is greater than the righteousness of the law. What does that mean? Faith is everything. Write it down. Faith is everything. Faith is so right, nothing can make faith to be wrong. You cannot call faith a failure. The righteousness of faith is greater than the righteousness of the law. Don't die with your title as a group leader. Don't die with your title as a pastor. If the virtues of faith are missing in your life, you are a corner. The righteousness of faith is greater than the righteousness of the Lord. Israel had the law. Till today, they didn't recognize the New Testament. Judaism has no place for Christ the Savior. Only the righteousness of faith can give you total and absolute victory. The righteousness of the Lord cannot carry you far. The righteousness of the law is the laws given by man, by your pastor, by your general overseer, the do's and don'ts of the ministry and church. And Paul made us to understand that that will amount to nothing if you don't plug yourself to the sockets of the righteousness of faith. Hallelujah. Continue from that verse 6 now. Yeah, who will who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above, or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. Wait but there. What does... Wait there. Wait there. Thank you. Just hold on there. In the morning, I told you of the two mountains. Life does not have three mountains. Life that we are living now does not have three mountains. The mountain of heaven, the mountain of the deepest depth. In between those two mountains, we have a huge valley of hopeless, helpless humanity. The day Adam fell from grace in the garden, of heaven and God kept him out of the garden of splendor. Wars began in the life of man. Wars began in the life. Man became helpless. Man became fearful. Man became uncertain. In between those two mountains, don't let there is no mountain anywhere. These are the real mountains. Who shall ascend into the heavens? Who shall ascend into the heavens and bring Christ down into your situation? The righteousness of the Lord cannot bring Christ down into your situation. Only the righteousness of faith can bring Christ down. That is the first mountain. You can't be going from place to place in these earthly places and find solution. Every time I tell you I go to heaven, it doesn't mean I die. 
It is unconnected. Tell Jesus, no shall ascend. That means God is giving us the mountain, the mountain to always ascend, ascend, ascend. Say with me, I will ascend. I will ascend. I will ascend into the heavens. I shall not be stranded in every place. I shall not be afflicted in every place. I shall not be bound in every place. I will ascend into the heavens to bring down Christ into my situation, to set me free from every bondage. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound. I cannot be bound. He just set me free. I cannot be bound. Amen. I cannot be bound. He just set me free. I cannot be bound. He just set me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound. Amen. I cannot be bound. No more time. Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound. I cannot be bound. Amen. I cannot be bound. Who shall ascend to the heavens? You will not be caught in the trap of every person again. You will not be stranded in the traps and bondages of every person again. Jesus mighty name. Amen. Who shall defend to the death and bring up Christ again from the dead? Continue from verse 7. Okay. Verse 8. Okay. Verse 8. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Stop there again. If... Stop there again. Stop there. Stop in that verse again. The word is native. The word of the righteousness of faith. Not the righteousness of the law. Put in thy mouth. The word of faith which we preach. For me, ordinary word. Walking with faith from my heart, we bring Jesus down into my situation. You mean ordinary words? Walking with faith from my heart can resurrect Jesus again into my stagnant situation. When Jesus resurrects, you should resurrect with him. Your dead good things shall resurrect with him. Just by the word of faith. It has been preached on you. Hallelujah. That is the dimension God wants us to operate. Who shall ascend and who shall descend? There is no third mountain. The first mountain is how do I bring God into my situation? The second mountain is how do I get to the foundations of this problem? And uproot it and escalate it and bring God to revive and resurrect two things of my life. Anything you call problem is located in those two places. If you can break through the heavenly places and get to the heavenly by faith, by faith, and bring 
dit son temps de sorte d'un problème. Il va dire des fondationnels problèmes. Il ne peut dire qu'il faut du word of God. Which we preach. The word of faith. Which we preach. You can uproot every foundational bondage and get your liberty and freedom. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, finally, you are reading from verse 9? Yes. Let's hear verse 9. Okay. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes into righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Amen. For there is no... Stop here. Stop here. There is no shame to them that believe it. I don't know what sin has done in your life. I don't know what obscurity shame has put you. I don't know the depth of reproach that shame has banished you. All you need to destroy the power of shame in your life is faith. There is no shame to them that believe it. That faith will come unto you today. God cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That is the word we are preaching to you now. May you catch revelation faith from this word we are preaching to you today. In Jesus' mighty name. There is no shame for them that believe it. Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. May this communion we are taking today eradicate every spot of shame in your life. In Jesus' mighty name, may the power in the blood of Jesus blot out every spot of shame in your career, in your marriage, in every area concerning your life. In Jesus' mighty name, the faith that kills shame is coming now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. Uh, verse 12. Yeah. For there 13. is no... 13? Yes. Okay. Uh, for 13. whoever calls the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Continue. I did... Okay. Then Israel rejects the gospel. Verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But amen, they have not. Amen and amen. Amen. Daughter of Yahweh, yes. may the Lord bless all the things you have read for us in our hearts. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. You can unmute yourself now. You can Thank mute you. yourself now. You can mute yourself. Thank you, Father. Thank you. I hope you have gotten your bread and your drinks ready. We are embarking. Hallelujah. Don't worry, I've muted you. We are embarking on a three day journey of faith that terminates shame and saves you from reproach. Hallelujah. Three day journey of faith that eradicates shame. And wipes out every spot of reproach in your life, in any area of your life. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Jesus, blessed be. 
I cannot be bound. Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound. Amen. I cannot be bound. Every bridge under the sound of my voice. Every broken pieces of pledge on that sound of my voice. I speak by the righteousness of faith to you. Not the righteousness of the Lord. Therefore, any converted into the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Converted into the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every drink under the sound of my voice is converted by the righteousness of faith into the precious blood of the Lamb of God, the blood of Jesus. Shared for the redemption. Of our souls, share for the remission of our sins. As we partake of this table of the righteousness of faith, as we partake of this table of the righteousness of faith, this journey of faith. Shall bring earthquake testimonies for everyone that goes with us in this story. In Jesus' mighty name, every ailment, every affliction, every bondage, every bewitchment that followed us to this temple of the righteousness of faith. Shall be buried by the power in the blood of Jesus. Be buried, be buried, be buried in Jesus' mighty name. The righteousness of it shall bring this battle for us. In Jesus' mighty name, we are free. Thank you, Father. Let be your holy name. In Jesus' name. Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound. Amen. I cannot be bound. Hallelujah. Jesus set me I cannot be bound, oh Jesus, set me free. I cannot be bound, Jesus, set me free. I cannot be bound, amen. I cannot be bound, hallelujah. Jesus, set me free. I cannot be bound, oh, Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound, Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound, amen. I cannot be bound, hallelujah, Jesus. I cannot be bound, oh, Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound, Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound, amen. I cannot be bound, hallelujah, Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus set me free. 
I cannot be bound. Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound. Amen. I cannot be bound. Hallelujah. Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus set me free. I cannot be born, amen. I cannot be born, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. I cannot be born, Jesus set me free. I cannot be born, Jesus set me free. I cannot be born, amen. I cannot be born. Hallelujah. I cannot be bound. He just me free. I cannot be bound. He just me free. I cannot be bound. Amen. I cannot be bound. Hallelujah. He just me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound. Amen. I cannot be bound. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Father, we thank you. We have received the energy for earthquake breakthroughs. We have received the energy of the righteousness of faith. Nothing shall score us wrong again. Nothing shall mark us wrong again. In the name of Jesus, because the righteousness of faith set man free from those two mountains. It's a mountain because it's not everybody that can go to heavenly places. Can't you read that scripture? He said, Who? That's a question mark. He didn't say, I shall ascend. It's a question mark. Because there is a mountain, who shall ascend? Who shall ascend? Who shall ascend into heaven? That's a mountainous situation. Heaven to heaven is a mountain for many people. That's why they run from one faith pastor to one faith prophet. They can't ascend heaven. The key of heaven has been thrown away by them. They have to depend on human beings. Pastor, pray for me. Pastor, what did God say? Pastor, what is that? They begin to mess them up. In earthly places, who shall ascend? It's a question. It's a mountain. It's not everybody that can ascend to heaven. So many things, so many limitations, so many distractions. So many wars, so many problems have overwhelmed them. They can't even see the sky, much less get to heaven. Who shall ascend into heaven? That's the first mountain. If you climb that mountain and get to heaven, you will level that mountain. Who shall dig and descend? Into the deep. Where is the deep? X. Where is the deep? Problems. Where is the deep? Hell. Chill. That's the deep. Multiply the affliction until you get there and liberate yourself from the chains of hell. 
no solution. That is the second one thing. One in heaven, one in hell. You must get yet and break that shame with the salt of never perish. 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 Destroy the bandage of death. Destroy the, the taste of untimely death. Ascending is work. Who shall ascend? That's why I led you in that prophetic declaration of righteousness. I shall ascend into heaven and bring Jesus down into my situation. In three days, I shall ascend into heaven and bring Jesus down into my circumstances. In three days, I shall descend to the deep and resurrect Jesus again in my affairs. Everywhere Jesus' power is dead in my situation, I shall go to the depth and resurrect his power to be revived in my life. Thank you. Blessed be your holy name. I have told you it's just 30 minutes. We are done. We are partaking of the flesh. It's time to explode. See you at midnight. In Jesus' mighty name. Just to recall his name. Hallelujah. Let's thank God. Let's appreciate him. Let's give him all the honor. We thank you for the blood we have taken. We thank him, oh Lord. Thank you, oh Lord, for your blood. Thank you for the flesh. Thank you, Lord. We appreciate you. We thank appreciate you, Lord. Thank you. The journey has started. God will see us through it in Jesus' mighty name. He has set us free and we shall be free indeed in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, King of Glory. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Shall we share the grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Seven ascension. Hallelujah. Let's go. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Peace in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. The journey has begun indeed. I bless all of you who are partakers of this Holy Communion service. We are going to meet at 12 Nigerian time today in Jesus' name. And I'm trusting God for the power to ascend over every impossibility. We are going to defy the law of gravity. And we are going to inaugurate the law of righteousness of faith. Ascending, ascending, ascending to heaven to break this one down into our situation. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah.